Welcome to Show Studio. It's our first panel of uh, the couture autumn winter season and we're reporting live about the fashions we're seeing in Paris. Um, it's a very special panel discussion for a number of reasons. Uh, the first being that I have an amazing artist working away behind me, Stephen Doherty, who's going to be transforming this into an absolutely beautiful um, depiction of all the couture fashions. Um, I've also got an incredible set of panellists with me to talk about what's, what's been going on at the Schiaparelli um, show that we've seen this morning. Uh, before we kick off, though, I'll let you guys introduce yourselves, starting with you, James. Hello, I'm James Sherwood. I'm an edi uh, editor-at-large of The Rake and a Thames and Hudson author. I'm Amber Butcher. I'm a fashion historian and an associate lecturer at London College of Fashion. I'm Judith Watt. I'm a fashion historian uh, and I teach at Central St Martins. Can we also have an introduction for our... Oh, Sorry, fun. yes, and actually most <laughs> importantly this is Wiggles, uh, who is very social and she's here because she was asked to be, <laughs> but also because uh, Schiaparelli had a accent called Nuts and she was, the only dress <laughs> thing she made during the war was a wedding dress for a accent. so this is very appropriate for Schiaparelli, <laughs> isn't it Pet? Good girl. <laughs> Talking of appropriate for Scaparelli, I'd like to start by discussing a little bit mm. um, the heritage of, the, of Scaparelli as a mm. house. Um, Judith, I'm going to go to you first because you just um, just released a book about Scaparelli with Quadrille, one of the Vogon mm. series. I know it's a, it's a big question to ask, but if you had to sort of encapsulate what you think the, the codes of Scaparelli are and Elsa's sort of particular interest as a designer, how would you how would you define that? Well there's a big difference between Elsa Schiaparelli and Schiaparelli exactly. today first of all and uh, if we were to talk DNA, uh, Schiaparelli at her height was relevant, mm. that's it, she was relevant to what was going on, she was witty, she did collaborations with artists, so did Chanel, um, but uh, Schiaparelli was much more avant-garde than Chanel. Um, of course, they hated each other, but the real work with artists came in much later. Um, if we were to talk about somebody who's much more connected with Elsa Schiaparelli, it would be what would, is happening now at, um, at Moschino, mm. in fact. But it's so it's humour, it's wit, it's relevance, it's social comment, and it's extremely good tailoring. Mm. Mm -hmm. you know, as a kind of, as a foundation. And what was called hard chic, her women were hard. They were sculpted, beautiful, brave, daring. Um, and, uh, but that only lasted until really 1939, 1940. So that was her high point. Mm -hmm. James, did you agree with everything we just had? What does that really mean to you? I, well, I love her word, shocking. Mm -hmm. You know, that I think in Scaparelli's era in the 20s and 30s, the sort of golden age for her, mm. fashion could still shock. Mm. I think it's very hard now for a fashion designer mm. to shock people. That's a really good point. Um, what, what I love about Elsa Schiaparelli is the fact that she respected a woman's body and enhanced it. Mm. And this is what I didn't really see with Zanini with the debut last season, mm. that the clothes were working against the body and there were lots of very disparate references, incredibly subtle too. Mm. You know, he, he was looking at the swimmer in the 20s mm. that Horst and Heunigen Hume photographed. But these are uh, possibly too subtle a reference for a modern audience because let's mm. face it, Scaparelli hasn't been on a runway for 60 years. Mm. So whereas a designer like Lagerfeld has taken Chanel's greatest hits and, 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 and really ran with it for 30 years, if I was Zanini, I'd be looking at Scaparelli's greatest hits and I would be pillaging mm. that archive for all it was worth mm. and I wouldn't be subtle about it. Mm. So we'd like to see something a bit more obvious. That's interesting. That I would. Yeah. I would. I know it sounds crass to say so, but uh, and, and I also want to see with the couture clothes that are pragmatic because wealthy people are incredibly practical. Mm. These are clothes that need to dine, to dance. They need to do more than just walk down a red carpet or a runway and be snapped from the front and from the back. You know, these, uh, the, the, a couture customer is somebody who, who needs to live in these clothes and Scaparelli certainly understood that that even if you looked at the quite extreme embellishment like the Duchess of Windsor mm. that wonderful black coat with the white leather with the embellishment the embellishment enhanced the garment it didn't work against it and didn't look weird mm. and I think there's a danger in playing with um, surrealism that it can look rather weird and obscure and mm. impractical. Mm. It's interesting that you say that about the couture client because I think they're actually someone who's often forgotten when we're looking at couture fashion, that point you made about it's not just being there to be photographed from the front and back. And you've written quite a lot about sort mm -hmm. of um, 
thoroughbred style and ascot yeah. style and that kind of thing. Talk to me a little bit about about the clients and and, and how couture is worn today. Well, I, I think it's important that you know if you think back to the great Scaparelli clients like the Duchess of Windsor, Millicent Rogers, Daisy Fellows. These people lived in a world that doesn't exist anymore. Mm. You know, they would have, the, the, the jewellers would make for them. So a couturier would have to make a, a dress that would complement a suite of jewellery, a parure. Mm. You don't really see that anymore, do you? Mm. And you're not really seeing Europeans dressed in Parisian haute couture. It's, you know, Saudi princesses. It might be Russian oligarchs' wives. Um, there are very different requirements there. So you can't be too sheer. You can't be too showy mm. in a way. And, um, and I think the, the couture, sometimes I look at it and think, what is this for? Because it's certainly not for the women who can mm. afford it. Mm. Can I just interject? Could Sorry. <laughs> I mean, the other thing, I agree, James. And the other, the other thing that's really important is those women were all older women. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and fashion today and what we see on the runways is modelled by young women. The idea is that, f that fashion is for the young, high fashion is for the young. Mm. Um, the women who carried Schiaparelli we're all 30 plus. I mean, the famous story about Daisy Fellows meeting a group of children in the park and saying to the nanny, but these children are charming. And she said, she says, who's are they? And he said, she said, they're yours, madam. <laughs> it's just unthinkable nowadays. It's one of the best stories of Daisy Fellows. But I mean, you know, th they were older. And so the paradigm has kind of changed as well, mm. I think. Mm. Do you agree with that? I mean, you were nodding there. Yeah, I think it also, the idea, idea that it's been relaunched as specifically a couture label is kind of interesting because for me Schiaparelli a lot of it is also about sort of funnily enough what I talked about last time I was here with you um, ideas around taste and what's good taste and what's bad taste mm. um, and so thinking about the sort of couture client <coughs> it's interesting to think that someone who was quite avant-garde mm. and quite known for creating things that weren't always looked on favourably in mm. her lifetime are now being, it's now being resurrected for the most expensive sort of mm. um, clientele basically. Mm. I think that's quite interesting and it, it seems like it might have worked better as a ready to wear collection. Or even accessories that in mind. and beauty. I don't know. Unless it's done, I mean it has to be done so well to succeed at couture level mm. to be able to have the house imprint and also be able to sell to couture clients, mm. it seems. that I, don't, I mean, we'll see what yes, happens. I agree with you. I agree with you about the ready-to-wear. Mm. Um, but uh, I assume that this is being... Sorry, I shouldn't be looking down. It. It's so <laughs> gripping, actually, looking at it. Uh, I assume that this is being punted to promote... Uh, fragrance and cosmetics and accessories like that. Well, the House have talked about how they're going to continue to do and um, sort of collaborations with artists. They're going to do special sort of capsule pieces and then work Which artists? Way. I was going to say you have to be so yeah. careful with that. Yeah, because I agree. it cannot it's be manufactured. Mm. You know, Scaparelli was a great friend of Duchamp, was mm. a great friend of Cocteau, they were intimate. Mm. You know, it, it's a different thing to sort of grabbing Tracy Emin and saying, hey Trace, I've got a great idea. Yeah. You know, whether it be shoddy with, you know, with, with Scaparelli and see what happens. Mm. Um, it was that they were personal relationships and they cannot be sort of um, aped, I suppose, mm. or forced, more to mm. the point. Absolutely, and they were collaborations, they weren't projects. Mm. Exactly. Big difference. Yeah, that's a really astute point. Well, it's always difficult. I think what we're, it was such a good point that you made, James, about the fact that the house hasn't been around for so long mm. and it's always, I think, in, in these kind of situations, it always does feel a little bit mm. forced when the house is revived in that way. You know, is there a way to do it right, or would, should <sighs> Scaparelli really have been left sleeping? Or is there a reason for it? That, mm. that would be my question. Mm. What, money. What, what is money? Mm -mm. Money. Mm. Uh, they'll want to, uh, I assume, flog bags, etc. Luxury market with a great label, great, you know, great heritage, because that's mm. the buzzword. Um, I mean, that's how she made her money after she went bust, remember, in 1954, was yeah. with licensing. I mean, a lot of the stuff you see, uh, like wonderful glasses and things, are, are, are licensed. And she'd be the first to say, license, license, license. That's, she, she'd love it. Mm. So, uh, but why revive the brand when there are so many young designers out there who really actually could do with a bit of support and a bit of, a bit of coverage and a mm. bit of... 
you know, a bit of breathing space and exposure mm. and probably will be more relevant than what we're going to look at shortly. But it's, I do feel in fashion there's become this idea that the brand is more important than the designer. You know, I think we're seeing a lot of that oh, with these gosh. revival of brands mm. and, and the focus is always that brand title, that heritage brand, this idea that the designer, they are there for a while, but they will be moved on. You know, they, they are relatively disposable in a sense. They, I think, I hate to say, but I think it's a kind of post Galliano dual thing. People don't want the designer to become bigger than the brand anymore. Oh, I do. Yeah, I do as well. I do, exactly, <laughs> they don't. But I feel like it, yeah. it, it has yeah. become very much, you know, yes. you hide behind the luxury house's name. There's something kind of safe in that. Poor things. Mm. And Scat was, all that sorry, good, sorry, go on. No, well, go I was on, just saying that the Scat was licensing when, when her career was effectively over. You mm. know, it wasn't the, the, the motivation for the beginning of the career, it was the end of Oh, it mm. was, James, so. it was. That's exactly how she made her money to begin with. She was incredibly astute businesswoman with a good part with a uh, good partner. So mm -hmm. after mm. after the uh, bow knot jumper, that's what she started doing almost immediately in America. She was the most famous designer in America after the war, the most mm. famous French designer, mm. because of the licensing. Um, but I agree with you. The end of the the end licensing story was very sad. But my God, she must have been so happy to say goodbye to <laughs> it all. Let's face it, poor old thing. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit more about, I think what James said at the start also was really interesting about this idea of the, you'd like to see some more obvious references because I think there is an element when you're reviving a house where it is about mm. educating mm. people about what a house stands for, you know, we presume that everyone knows about Scaparelli when actually, you know. It's a, it's a handful of fashion historians. Yeah, it is, it really her. is. Mm. And, uh, and I, I do think that her sort of glory days, her 20s and 30s, mm. are ripe for revival now, mm. actually. I mean, as, as I say, what interests me about Scaparelli was, was the way that she respected the female body. You know, mm. she didn't design away from it. And, um, and it was, there was never a, an irrelevant sort of addition to, to, to mm. any p garment. Mm. And um, what, what I do see now with the couture is it's almost throw everything that you possibly can at it to look yeah. as strange and odd and not nostalgic mm. as possible. Yeah. I don't see anything wrong with being nostalgic when it didn't get much better than mm. the Duchess of Windsor's wardrobe. Mm. Mm. So. Yes. Mm. Yeah, I mean, the thing about, the thing about Schiaparelli, Schiaparelli originally, Elsa, was a silhouette. Yeah. Unmistakable. I mean, what you've got on here, Amy, is wonderful, Amy. adorable. Amber. Amber. Amber, sorry. You see, well, I call you Wednesday. I know. Sorry. I've been called Lauren, I've been called Wednesday. Amber, Amber warning. Um, because that's lovely, this little jokey pastiche of the lobster. I mean, that's really good fun. Mm. Uh, and that's what, she, I mean, she's so well known for, for, for yeah, that, isn't yeah. she? But that was a great collaboration. But before that, it was very much silhouette. I mean, yeah. she's fantastic sculpted silhouettes. Mm. And as you say, James, really not, not, not scared of a, of a fit female body mm. at all. I love it that she said that the, the, the client should train the body to the dress. Yes, exactly. <laughs> well, she's, yeah, abs a very unmodern. Abs absolute genius. <laughs> it's not very PC, but which, which of us are on this panel? So. <laughs> what do you see as her signatures? Because mm. talking of the lobster that you've, have you've got on, what would you like to see pulled out? Well, yeah, going back to that, I think you're when you're kind of reviving something after so long, you're treading such a fine line, mm. I think, because some of the reviews I read of the last collection yeah, the debut. were saying that it was too much like the original Schiaparelli, <laughs> which could, I mean, could be further from I the truth, don't could it, personally at all. think it was. Yeah. But it's, I don't think you can ever really please anyone because Schiaparelli was kind of forgotten for so long mm. by everyone other than a bunch of fashion mm. historians and sort of fashion fanatics. Mm. And designers. She and designers. And designers. Mm. But she, I think she holds a really mm. revered place mm. in for people that do know her. Mm. And so I think yeah. to try to please everyone then is going to be kind of impossible because you've got to make it marketable and sellable. But also you do have this incredible heritage that you should be drawing on mm. to make it a true sort of continuation of the house. Mm. It's a bit like a band, do you mm. know, that somebody like the Rolling Stones going on tour and saying we're, we're only going to um, perform yeah. new material. Mm. You know, we're just going to forget about catalogue. It'd be like Dolly Parton mm. playing Glasto and saying I'm just going to perform from the new album. Why mm. would you do that when you've mm. got all, you know, you have the affection there and, and the respect and the heritage. But then it's mm. difficult to take that heritage without it looking like 
Oh, com- a complete mm-hmm. copy. Yeah. I think would be or awful. without it looking cartoony. You know, we've talked a lot about silhouette on this, which I think is really important mm-hmm. because I do think if you asked a lot of people to give you scaparelli buzzwords, they would say things like surrealism, pink, lobster. Lobsters. They would go <laughs> for very surface-based mm-hmm. things, mm-hmm. and I think that's also what's what's tricky to to get that heritage correct without just doing things that feel quite cartoonish. I just didn't see the references in the last collection. I mean, there was those bits and bobs of grip by jewellery that was slightly surreal, but blink and you'd miss it. Mm. Um, and I, it was from the first silhouette when you saw Stella Tennant mm. in that print. I, I've often made this comment about bespoke, that just because something is handmade doesn't mean it's good. Mm. You know, something can be, that entire collection, I don't think a machine touched it apparently, and all the, you know, Zanini made all the, you know, hand, hand painted all the prints and all the rest of it, mm. but all of that amounts to nothing without taste and without mm. dash and without attack. Mm. And if you don't have that, then what's the point of putting on a, a runway show? Mm. Were you a fan of what, you, of what you've seen from Marcus and Nina Judas? No. No? Not at all. Did you like it when we had La Croix doing it? I think that La Croix was much better. And yeah. I think it's really, really sad that they didn't keep him. I think it's very sad they didn't appoint John Galliano, actually, to design it. Because I think he's... A, he, he's with, you know, and we were talking about people who understand Mm. Stood it, stood her. I mean, that's one person who really did, yeah. and would get the taste facts. So just bordering tacky, yeah. perfectly, yeah. you know. Um, but uh, I felt that what Le Croix did in Paris um, last year was quite good, but it was presented in such a terribly uptight, formal, scared kind of way with the carousel. There was no, there was no humour to it because that's what people are forgetting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When I would say Moschino, she was funny. Yeah. yeah. It was, there was yeah. humour, and Paul Lacroix is a fantastic designer, and I felt it had gone off half cock. And what I do think was that he probably had a lot of interference mm. on what was turned out at the end. Mm. That's what I think. You mm. know, and a designer is not allowed to do anything they want but I loved I, I loved the the pink and and, and etc I thought that was very good and the clowns mm. and, and everything and there was some real panache to it mm. um, but uh, very very tough thing to do but he should have been allowed to do a second season mm. and I don't know whether it's true this theory that they're going to be doing different designers yeah they insane yeah. you know just give somebody a job and let them find their way into mm. it <coughs> and and d- the point you made earlier I mean this is a classic example of designers really being at the bottom of the pecking order mm. it's wrong it really is wrong those people who are heading up those studios and ha- are having to come up with ideas and study and develop and produce fantastic things that are relevant should be allowed to a they should be given credit but b they should really be allowed to mature not so the client problem. needs to get to know exactly yeah. the, the yeah. couturier that was oh. the whole point with scaparelli that she was a, a friend of all of these <laughs> incredible you know social lionesses that she she mm. socialized with them she mm. knew them she yeah. they, they followed the way yeah. that she dressed yeah. You know, it wasn't an anonymous person hiding behind a curtain, just yeah. sending out, you know, look after look and exit after exit. It was, you know, there was the, the relationship was there. And mm. I'm sure and no Galliano had that with his couture yes. clients. Mm. No. Yeah. But do you think it smacks a little bit of fear, you know, this idea of getting lots of different people to interpret it? It's almost Desperation. like... Desperation. The whole, the whole mm. thing seems to me to be quite a terrified approach yeah. to relaunching this label, to be honest. I think um, those ideas of playing with good and bad taste, really verging on tacky. It's such a difficult mm. sell, especially in the couture market, mm. Mm. that they seem to be kind of really mm-hmm. grasping at straws and they want it to have the kind of the prestige of the name, but without any of the humour or mm. any of the sort of mm. fun that she actually mm. has. Z- Zanini worked with, with, with Versace, with Donatella, so you know, he understands that language, that and sort of Dolce lexicon Gabbana of clothes, well. Dolce, yeah. Holston, very mm. hard sell, mm. you know, to follow that one. You know, and I feel like what you did at Russia was, it, there was a wit to that, there mm. really was, there was a kind of a kook to that that made mm. it very interesting. I think it, well, having said it should be Galliano, I think the designer should have been a woman, because that, that's the funny thing about Scaparelli, She's, she had a very, very feminine touch. She, Feminist, she, actually, yeah, you yeah. would have said, almost. Well, she said she hated suffragettes, but, you know, <laughs> silly old thing, but, uh, you know, but yes, it was feminist, absolutely, and I think, <laughs> ask me, but I think, <laughs> that's a weird, what an awful idea, uh, but I think that, I think there needs to be a feminine 
the little bit of feminine subversion here, and maybe that's what that's Zanini. But he may be being told he can't do it. Yeah. Look, Farida Kelfer is there. She's brilliant. Yeah, she's absolutely, she's absolutely bang on. And the other person who should have got the job, of course, was Gautier. Be mm. perfect. Yeah. Shoe in. I think know. it's important to talk about Frida Kaufman because yeah. she has an interesting oh, role wonderful. there. She's an ambassador yes. there. And, and she does have a kind of... Yeah. I think I, I actually interviewed her for, for Lula, for the, mm. the issue that's just come out. And she kind of... I told her that Amanda Harlock always refers to herself as a pathfinder at Chanel. And I said, is that what you're doing at Scaparelli? And she said, you know, it's relatively similar, this idea of being a pair of eyes and seeing things and bringing it in. Mm. But you think you need that woman's touch, don't you? You need that element of someone who knows the history and who knows... And just who wears pieces but, as well. But yes, exactly. She's a brilliant clothes horse. Yeah. She, you know, she's marvellous in that mm. way. She is a Scaparelli client. Yeah. I mean, absolutely old school she'd have been it. She comes from a subversive enough background with Gautier and Louboutin and that kind of thing. Mm. And Elia, fabulous. Mm. I mean, she knows that she's got very, very good taste. And she's, you would say this thing about taste. She's confident enough to, to, to run with bad taste. Too, yeah, exactly. And play on it. I mean, I think she should be designing it. Sorry, mm. she should be heading up the design studio. But I think she's. I think she's wonderful, and I and I think it's very sad that you know. And I think I'm so glad you've raised her because she hardly appears in any of this mm. now. Mm. And I think she's incredibly important. You cannot eat those. <laughs> They are sacrosanct, Ducky. This is would anarchy. You, <laughs> <laughs> this is very sacrosanct. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. um, do you agree with that, this idea of a female designer? Though? You mm. were kind of nodding along with, when Judith was saying something like that. Or it's quite a difficult argument, mm. isn't it? Because a, a lot of the time people get quite upset if you say women design differently f yeah. to men. I don't know. I mean, I was trying to, uh, kind of thinking about that yeah. and processing it. And I, because you've got, I mean, someone like Galliano does do amazing sort of <laughs> you know sort of like the bias car and all yeah. of that that I think is I don't know if I'd necessarily agree with that you have to for me it's more about the sort of sensibility I think of understanding the heritage but also being allowed to really run with it mm. because I think he does have a real love for her work and mm. he talks about having you know read her autobiography from a really young age and all that kind of stuff mm. but I do get the impression that the people who the, the you know owners are kind of like this has got to work yeah we're, we're not going to take risks with this it's mm. got to kind of make sense it's very I mean poor old Scap had a terrible time being Italian mm. uh, you know with with the, that lovely enemy Coco Chanel and all being vile about her because she was Italian. I mean, this is a very Italian operation, don't mm. forget. Um, and there, there's not absolutely nothing wrong with that at all, but that might be part of it. I mean, maybe that just needs to be a little bit more fun and less, oh my God, we've got to get it right and she was Italian. But I don't oh. think there's much room for fun in fashion at the moment. You know, we were talking about the pace be. on these panels <coughs> of fashion and and the scrutiny that goes around there fashion. Is and mm. There is in There is. There absolutely is. If you can't do it there... Where can you do it? Exactly. Yeah, you know, or unless you just, just you know, or at college. But then I think the problem yeah. is couture has become, and, and you mm. really sort of touched mm. on this very smartly, doing it's become a part of the big business of fashion and a part of that wheel where the show is about, you know, selling lipsticks and perfumes. And even though, you know, you can say in the craft that there should be that freedom, for what, what Couture stands for now has become really sort of muddled in this big business operation that is fashion. And quite it's quite scary. Ellie, yes. Ellie Saab is probably the most successful Couturier. Mm -hmm. I don't know about the numbers, but when I look at the clothes, I see more mm. of them around the world mm. than, than I do in any of the others. Mm. I mean, I haven't seen anything from this last collection. Mm. Um, and I don't mean looking at the, at, at the red carpet either, because that's entirely irrelevant. Mm. You know, if a couture client saw a piece in a red carpet, that would be curtains for the designer anyway. You're not interested. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I think that's, that's probably a, a problem in the fashion industry, that everything is now geared towards red carpet, to mm. those tiny mm. little bites, and people can like or dislike and click and not click. Mm. I mean, in Scaparelli's day, you know, you didn't want to be photographed. That was the point. Mm. You know, apart from maybe Horst in, in Vogue, or mm. you know, the, the very occasional you know, official portraits of these women, but mm. you avoid a publicity like the plague. Mm. And I suppose publicity is now the, um, you know, it's the fuel to the fire mm. for fashion. Um, mm. It's not about the client. This kills me. That it's not about the client anymore, mm. and that amazes me. So that well, trickles down <coughs> to ready to wear. You know, nothing's sure, made. Sure. I was having a really interesting conversation. Um, 
but then other fashion journalists he's working on a project about washing how you wash your clothes because he says he to him he's like that's the biggest sign that fashion's not actually about the wearer at all because yeah. you know everything design just puts a specialist dry clean only tag on it you know they don't think you know can this person actually enjoy wearing this can they look after it properly you know like jersey sweaters come with specialist dry clean only you know, nothing's catered to the wearer anymore it's all about kind of the viewer Yes. I think, and often that viewer is a digital viewer, it's, it's someone who's liking it on Instagram, or it's quite scary, isn't it? I think, yes, uh, d there are other couturiers other than the big houses, that's the first thing to remember, yeah. and some extremely good ones who don't make a fortune at all, but are fantastic, um, like uh, the original Hervé Léger, mm. uh, Henri Leroux, I mean, f fantastic, is it Henri? Sorry. I can't remember. That's a Google thing. Um, so I think, but it's but fashion isn't about the clothes anymore. Mm. It's about this. Mm. It is about a picture online. Mm. I mean, and I think that that's incredibly sad that you're not seeing the clothes moving. Mm. You know, my own experience at St Martin's, Central St Martin's, I should say, because I teach the fashion communication students. I mean, this is great fashion communication. Show Studio is, mm. is it. Um, but it is about the fashion image now. Mm. I mean, for them to actually be able to identify what a piece of fabric is, is unimaginable. Mm. For them to get their heads around what wearing a boned garment is like, is unimaginable. Mm. So I will take them in. Mm. You know, because, so the reality of, of what these, it's not about how they're moving or what poor old Zanini's having to do in the studio and tearing his hair up probably and feeling worried and mm. sick because it's hitting the public and everyone's just looking online and thinking, no, I don't like that. Instead of not being able to see it in the round or mm. taking it out and looking on the inside mm. and seeing how beautifully it's made, mm. actually. I mean, you say, does it, you know, doesn't matter if it's, you know, they've hand, they've painted for forever and all, but actually it kind of does. Oh, uh, it, you know, the make is, I mean, with your, you know, it's, it's very, very important. It's the bespoke. I, I, that, well, I've sort of spent, spent my career supporting that, mm. you know, the bespoke and the mm. couture. But I think what I meant is that you, mm. there's no point saying that a collection is entirely created by the hands mm. of angels mm. if no, it's not if it wearable. Nice, yeah. No, no, no. And no, if it's not no, a good silhouette. And mm. actually, looking at last season, at those reversible coats were pointless. They were absolutely pointless mm. and they don't work. No, I, I can't imagine a couture client who would be interested to have marabou on the lining of a coat just so you can go to der halfway through the evening and, and turn it round. Mm. And it's more important that you look great from the waist up when you're having dinner with, you mm. know, the President of France or, mm. you know, or... or, or, or yes, mm. I think actually the, 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 <coughs> the clientele, the, it's, it's just so much another stratosphere. Yeah. It's very, very difficult for us to understand and remember her uh, her clientele and Chanel's clientele are the, some of the great icons from the 20th century mm. those mm. women you know mm. I mean like Simpson and Millicent Rogers and the Elsie Mendels and little Barbara de Erlanger and they were extraordinary women and I just love the fact that they were older of course yeah got the kids so they could be as unfaithful as what they wanted but, <laughs> uh, but it was a lot of money and the whole you know it's very very different now so what is couture for I, I don't know it should be worshipping fabulous make and beautiful fit and being appropriate for you know, each garment being appropriate for each for each occasion mm. you know mm. that's what it should that's what they should be for right mm. for the to be, to be well dressed, mm. you're appropriately dressed. Mm. I mean, I think, anyway, sorry. Well, no, appropriate's the word, yeah. isn't it, actually. I mean, that, that, that's a word that I repeat over and mm. over like a mantra that is appropriate to the situation that you're in. Mm. And, you know, don't happen to agree looking at the, you know, the wedding outfit last um, season for Zanini, that it was a sort of capri pants with a little crop jacket and all the fashion journalists would say, oh, wonderful, it's, you know, it's so modern, so now. So you tell me one woman who would get married in that. Mm. One woman. And I would, I, I, I would take my hat off to her for even bothering. You know, it's, mm. Um, mm. it's the p being fit for purpose. A mm. couture garment is ordered because it's fit for purpose, it's for Longchamp, for the races, it's for Ascot, mm. it's for a garden party, it's for... And th this world does still exist. Mm. I mean, just because people don't like it to exist and mm. would prefer to look at J-Lo and God knows who else, you know, and the Kardashians, <laughs> that world exists and those are the people who can afford mm. these clothes and who patronise these designers and actually who have the time 
because I mean celebrities yeah. seem, seem to have the attention span of a gnat you know once mm. you've, you've got three outfits in one night you know if you're going to the Oscars you mm. can do the pre you can do the red carpet the after party with Vanity Fair mm. so really the designers are getting very short changed if somebody's getting like it's like a striptease artist getting a gypsy <laughs> rose leaf four times yeah. a night and they're getting them free and they get or they're yeah. being paid to order yeah. them yeah. Yeah. yeah well that whole idea of appropriateness really mm. does kind of make you think that it is just you know the sort of the icing on the cake for a load mm. of licensing mm. products because like how would you make Schiaparelli appropriate for that kind of world I think in the way that it's being done mm -hmm. now yeah because I think correct me if I'm wrong but I do think at the bottom of that world is a desire to look beautiful and you would like, hope so yeah or, or, or look appro appropriate is, mm. is a good, good enough word as any I mean I've mm. looked at the you know the Met Ball was arguably the worst dressed red carpet I've ever seen mm, this mm. it was unbelievable because people were chasing the picture they're like ambulance chasers they want the picture mm. you know and the most beautiful woman at that ball was ignored was Stella Tennant because she wasn't relevant for that season but mm. there she was looking absolutely exquisite in a sort of puffball of marabou looked very modern you know because her hair's you know, it's modern it's short mm. you know the way she wears a tiara is modern but she still has class um, mm. is not a sort of sideshow Mm. Which I thought most of the most of the, the girls on the red, on the red carpet at the, the Met Ball were, and it, it, it just became desperate, really. It's mm. desperation rather than fashion. But mm. There we are. I do <laughs> wonder what goes on there at the Met Ball. I mean, I do wonder. I mean, I know quite a lot of what does go on, but because obviously it's all over the internet, you know, punch ups mm. and the loos and God knows what. But let's just look at it. The punk. Mm. Charles James, at which point did those clothes bear any no, relevance so, mm. to yeah. the incredible <coughs> and punk, the kind of fantastic nature of the beast? Mm. And with Charles James, really arguably the greatest design of the 20th century, wearing that mm. stuff? Because guess what? It's a frock. I mean, Sorry, I hurt my my soul hurts. So I think <laughs> these are great people making these fantastic clothes that are extraordinary, and you think you can just rock up mm. in something that's just not beautiful enough. Well, the killer for me was that Oscar de la Renta that Sarah Jessica Parker wore, the black and white mm. with the fantail, mm. and then had Oscar de la Renta's signature on the train nice. and I just thought that's the end you might as well just hold a coca-cola can up and smile you know it, it's uh, it was terrifying it's everything that Charles James is not or was not you know that's the that's the truth should we look at what Marco's yes. news done for this season can we have a look him? so this is his second collection as we've said yes label. I presume the hats are Stephen Jones I, I presume mm. the hats are Stephen Jones I love the second one that's my the second thing. one's from the uh, Rubens it's from the hat uh, support, and I think it's uh, uh, Helena Formal who's wearing it. So really yeah. good. Yep, that's where it's from. It's very good, Stephen stuff. <laughs> um, yeah, the furs, the furs are incredibly heavy. Mm. The, the number three, we've got the uh, the mittens. That is classic um, reference. Yeah. Uh, the drawings from Vogue, and it's by Eric. If you go to number two. That looks like beaver to me. It mm. looks like, wait for it, sheared beaver. Uh, and um, it's so clunky. The one great thing about Scaparelli, oh, the fur is damn well. good at fur. Yeah. Yeah. Really, really <coughs> good at making them light, light and, and slightly and feral yeah. and yeah. rude, but gorgeous and just rather sports wearing. Now that is a heavy, yeah, they feel very that nice collar's too. not good. Can you go further back? So that is, I'm going to Can you go back to the first, yeah. that first, first exit? One, yes, what do you That's think about that, Jake? It's inexplicable. Mm. It's in, I, I Sable, cannot think, I think of a woman who yeah. would wear, who would want to wear that. The sleeve, I mean, the, scap the scapperly shoulder, it's very important. Mm. Lala, yeah. That isn't the scapperly shoulder for no. a start. Yeah. You know, that's some ludicrous Adrian version of, you know, yes. Joan Crawford. <laughs> yeah. You know, look, it, it's, uh, I, I don't see the, what's happened to the body here? You know, yeah. that's the honey monster. Mm. That is not a beautiful woman with a you know a fantastic waistline and magnificent shoulders. Mm. You know you've, the body you, you, is is irrelevant to yes. that coat. What would happen if Grace Jones was wearing that? What I would it look like then? Ridiculous, because Grace that should be Grace Jones's purchase. Mm. That would be a Grace Jones. It's leopard. 
Uh, I think it's pretty well, it certainly will obviously fake leopard, but printed leopard, sable, you know. But would she wear that? No, mm. because it's, it's, it's not, tr it's not risque enough. It's I mean, not sexy. Look at yeah, what's yeah, the hell of the, the, the sorry, sorry, Amber, go on. <laughs> no, I was just agreeing. It's, it's, oh, it's, it's that whole negation of the body that yes. makes it just not, not the sexy mm. coat, yeah. But. <laughs> It's that you know, it's furs, it's luxury, you know. Yeah, but are you seeing any uh, any sort of techniques of the couture? It's difficult to look at a still photograph and see that. But you know, looking at the third piece, that sort of A-line skirt, mm. it, it's sort of you know, a, a under manager and Nat West will wear that sort of length and no, that, that colour for that matter. Well. I don't know that that's true because it's crocodile. Mm. So it's <laughs> you're not you know, my, not my mobile. Oh, okay. I quite like that. <laughs> I quite like that skirt. Yeah. Okay. So the skirt is the skirt is is a, is an A-line skirt, uh, but what is Schiaparelli there is the patchwork. Supposedly the patchwork bag from her uh, Commedia dell'arte collection of. Uh, 1937. So that's what they've tried to do there, and then we've got a bit of heart going on there. Yeah, the which is actually heart. very Comme des Garçons taking mm. on Schiaparelli. Mm. Okay, we've got another nice heart there. Now, I think this, this is interesting what we were talking yeah. about with this idea of creating visual codes which are going yes. to filter down into selling accessories and perfume. And yeah. Because yeah. you are particularly seeing that here. What do you think, Amber? Um, I just think it looks like a bit of a mess, to be honest. It's hard to like you say see the exact sort of details and construction and everything from this mm -hmm. but I mean that one I'm not a particular fan just of that skirt <laughs> just no. focusing on this skirt for some reason <coughs> and I think the whole thing together the, the styling of it I don't like I think it's heavy handed it doesn't look fun it looks like they're trying to be fun it's like organised fun I think it's organised fun that's so true and thinking about Scaparelli yeah. you know those collections yeah. were so strong these you know Comedia Latte you know the, the, yeah. the Harlequins, the Zodiac. You know they were yes. such moments in mm. fashion history, and she she was straight in there with the first exit mm. that you knew what you were going to get. That this was you know this is Capri, this is this mm. season. This I, I'd find it very hard to read if I was well, a client. That's your well, Oscar de la Renta signature and there. And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Much. Oh. in the big ES. The, the big ES. Yeah. <laughs> right. Can we just go back to this one, uh, the heart, because that's can taken from that's taken from the ad for shocking. Mm. Uh, one of the well, images the bleeding for that. Heart. Yes. Yeah, the heart is, is from that, and of yeah. course, but, but that's kind of it. I don't unless the the arrows and etc. But not the bleeding heart. But there's a Vertes drawing uh -huh. of that. That's a copy that is taken from. Um, I think it's 1936. That coat, um, but it's a it. I don't know. Do you understand the colours? In no, the, the, the that's exactly what I was going to say, Amber. What do you think? I'm confused by the. Correct me if I'm missing mm -hmm. reference here by the, the real prominence of brown in the opening section I because I don't associate brown. There's nothing as joyful being as about brown no, for a start, unless it's sort of a maybe champagne -y or that, that yeah. sort of very faded yes, grey Kelly colours. It's very conventional fur. Now, those yeah. fur colouring. Now, those will be going to Russians or Chinese. Mm. Mm. Sable, printed, I'm sure it's mink. Printed with yeah, it's mm. a it's a it's a shoe in for yeah. for Russians. The middle one's very American. Mm. Hello, Mrs. <laughs> um, and so it's very conventional. Is mm. what I'm saying. If if it was going to be Scaparelli's first, were incredible. But does this pink poolside coat? I mean, uh, <sighs> why would you produce a draped gown like that underneath it that shows immense promise? Mm. And yeah. then yeah. put a sort of coat that you. I'm you confused by what she's holding as well. Maybe we'll see when we go to the close ups whether that's. It looks like some kind of. I mean, if we are talking about you know yeah. fashion that has to be understood in a second, you know, with the click of a mouse, mm. this is going to have you reaching for the gym bottle because I, I, I don't know what to make of it. Mm. Yes, yet. except we can't see the back. Mm. True. So she bravely, because I mean that back of that coat might be fabulous. We don't know, but I completely agree with you. Oh God, and poor old Yves Saint Laurent is probably turning in his grave mm -hmm. as well, um, because you think how fabulous his. His uh, Scaparelli uh, references were that blue dress could be really good, and we can't see it. Wonder why? 
Mm. Peculiar. Who styled this? It feels more like it's about looks, though, doesn't it? It feels like, because this is what a lot of people said about the first collection, because all the hair and makeup was different oh, yeah. for each girl, and it felt like it was more about creating mm. sort of a set of identities than about creating beautiful pieces. Yeah, but, I, I mean, you'd, you're talking no. to, uh, for, for no. a picture. He's eating the um, chocolate. Yeah. You're not allowed to eat the biscuit, Wiggles. You know, for, a, a, for a couture clientele, you, you, you really don't want this schizophrenia. You mm. know, you haven't got time for it, more to the point. You know, mm. you want to order and say that, 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 that. And then you go and amend it. Because, I mean, at least what we're seeing here, you, everybody understands that the couture can be altered. Yeah. So, you know, hem, like hems will change, down, yeah. coats will be, you know, it, it, it can be calmed down, it can be amended for a, a sort of more pragmatic wardrobe. Mm. But, you know, looking at that green thing, well, um, but the middle one's good. I mean, if it wasn't Scaparelli, I mean, it's a beautiful jacket. Mm. That's that's a that's a uh, in my opinion anyway. Well, great mm. for Belle's. It's it, yeah, it's a it's a really beautiful jacket. That the waist and the waist. One wants to look at these dresses actually, but that's obviously a skirt mm. with um, with a shirt. Well, that's uh, that's Fox. The two. It's a, it's again that build up of that's the sleeves that it just somehow. I suppose it's what Lacroix did when he was referencing her. He was referencing the dead end of Scaparelli. Yeah. That's what was so strange about it. I mean, this is this is her kind of directoire end of. Yeah. This isn't her in the thirties. These sleeves. Yeah. And that's I think is what's weird about this. I mean, why would you reference a Scaparelli kind of and that those that skirt in the middle is a kind of nineteen forties utility yeah. design? It's she like didn't do any designs in the forties. It's like mm, the B yeah. side of her career a little yeah. bit to choose mm. that as a, a, as the key reference is bizarre. I don't, mm. I'm afraid I'm totally lost when I look at a sort of a party hat and and I. I, I I don't understand. Well, you know that what it is, don't you? you what what he what? I know Steve, she's driving what, yeah, at, no, but I, he's he's used the hat that was in the Palmer White book, which then Adrian, of course, referenced for the women. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, and it's it's meant to be the circus collection, but the circus collection was much better than just one hat. Mm. Mm. It was amazing. I mean, and they tried to get the colour there, but it's oh come on. I, I defy if any woman to, to, to think that that would be a sensible, a, a sort of even sexy proposition. Not with those glasses. To go out. Where, no, where the I hell do you wear that? Better. You know, you tell me where you, and, and, and would you choose to put that together as a look? Probably not. I would hope not. Mm. Um, well, it's not so much it's the hair that's so terrible. Right, Wiggy. Come it's on. Um, it's the style, <laughs> it's the presentation. Sorry, we're so yeah, like I'm really not monster. Go enjoying on. the styling no. and presentation. Come on either i feel like it's like you need you need kind of stronger makeup as well i think yes. on the models with this much th kind of this many sort of theatrical looks whether you, whether the theater is working or not i think you need to follow through you need to follow through the entire yeah. i don't way. see anything aspirational you know that you one would think i would love to look like that mm. not me personally mm. but look at your client and also yeah. but even because you know the other obviously she was great at, at sort of sportswear as mm. well and like the yes. beach pajamas is what yes. i'm seeing referenced yeah. here but again the previous ones just seem to be done in a really sort of heavy-handed way they don't seem to have yes. so much lightness. Yes. Those ones are looking a bit better, mm. the pink ones. But those, burgundy, kind of just... I mean, Scaparelli was a real mm. disciple of Savile Row as well. You know, yes. that well, Anderson and Shepherd yeah. made, made, yes. made her, her clothes. You know, she'd be skitting off to the Isle of Skye, you know, mm. looking for, you know, developing her own tweeds. And, and, and her fabrics, so that was so important, fabric technology. And I, I, it's not fair yeah. to look at it on screen and say I'm not seeing that here, but mm. I'm not seeing mm. that here. It goes back to what you were saying also about this idea of red carpet dressing because mm. this feels to me very much about creating, yeah, I said it before, but looks rather than garments. You yeah. know, it's about creating things that, I think this is a collection that's tailored, tailored towards fashion as it is now, you know, immediate visual mm. impact. Yeah. It's quite sort of little caricatures, but it's not really about pieces. It's not a collection, or to the point. Yes. It's a series of random garments yeah. put together. They just think, think which colours really shouldn't work together, mm. and as it turns out, they don't. It was interesting, yeah. when I interviewed Farida Kuffer, she did say that that was part of something they were trying to do last season. She said she didn't want it to be this, 
the case, you know, all the girls come out and they all look the same. So she wanted mm. to make it lots of different identities <coughs> and lots of different people. Well, you, you, you might as well just get the sartorialist or somebody to do a, a street style and just snap people in the streets and, and dress them that way rather than do a runway show. Mm. You know, if you want to be that spontaneous and say it's all, you know, the, it, it actually does, it, it sort of takes away the point of a designer's point of view. Cause it's mm. all about the client then, isn't it? It's all about how mm. somebody puts it together. So if you can't dictate what, what you think is correct for the season, Mm. Well, we, we all might as well just go home, really. Do you know what? That's probably what the problem is. Mm. And it is, it's too much control. Yeah. He's not being allowed to... I mean, I could mm. see with Lacroix that he hadn't been allowed to do what he wanted. You could mm. just see it. It was nearly there, but not quite there. And he did it, He did a lot more. I mean, and um, when I say it should have been a woman designer, I don't mean because it's more comfortable or that there is a problem with designers who are male and usually gay, that there is anything wrong with their vision of women. I can't bear that argument. I think it's incredibly naive. They yeah. make really fantastically strong women. But I feel that these clothes, they're not comfortable to wear. They're no. not good to wear. Precisely. I don't think they're good to wear. Can you see a strong woman on that catwalk? No, either? You know. absolutely it looks like not. She, I know you said before this, Caprini said you know, the body should mm. yeah, yeah. fit the dress, but it feels like that's been taken to the extreme here. You know, yes. they're almost they don't have an identity. The woman, it's all about the identity of the yeah. clothes. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I am a fan of fourteen, though. I think that is quite beautiful. Mm. What is it, dear? Is it Devoy velvet? Yeah, or? it's mm. velvet and little butterflies. Is it? I can't remember which collection that was, it Judith. Like the butterfly yeah. collection. It was the, it was the uh, 1937 uh, spring And Stephen's summer. hats yeah. are singing a little bit. If you go yeah, back to number good. 12 just quickly. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, at, at yes, least with I that, the, there's something there. You mm, know, the, yes. there's something, the drama with the hat. Then also, there's this matadory mm. sort of look with the Polaroid coat mm. is, is good. But the black dress doesn't seem to cling to her or, or, or to enhance the figure. No, it's kind of sagging, at isn't all. it? It's and I don't, that should almost be like that, you know, that wonderful sort of almost like liquid satin, mm. the bias cut mm. that she did. I can't remember yes. who it was photographed on, but I'd be referencing that in the New York Minute, to be honest. Mm. And also, are, are, are these yes. for day? Are they for evening? Or does nobody care anymore about day or evening? And they're just, you know, wear right. what they like. But do you think a couture client would care about day? Massively. Day. I think yeah. you'd care about breakfast. You would care about mm. how you were seen at breakfast, lunch, dinner, you know, the opera, mm. the ballet. The, yeah, of course, absolutely. At a ball. I'd love to be a couture client just I know, for that's one day. Really <laughs> <laughs> that's really my <laughs> takeaway from yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think that was Susie Makers' yeah. comment on the radio a couple of weeks ago and said what, what she truly loved and she, I don't think she's ever had a, a couture piece made. Mm. So I think she'd be oh, queuing up fantastic. to mm. make for um, her. Okay, so number 15 is, is easy peasy. B, exactly, it's B, but it's, Bola Hoop, but it's absolutely the Barbara Hula Needle yeah. Purple. Mm. Okay, so let's look at the next one. Is that um, like a monkey number 16. fur? No, it's not a monkey fur because that's. I know it's illegal. <laughs> it, 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 will be, it will be some, I assume, some kind of goat, yeah, goat. Um, goat hair doing that. And uh, it's quite a look. Uh, but what is happening what with is the dress? What is that print? I think it's, it's squirrels. Squirrels. Yeah, it's squirrels. squirrels. Oh, God. Purple squirrels. Look at the, the hair and makeup there. I mean, it, there really isn't is. any. It's just this anemic teenager. Mm. Yes, oh, um, dear. You know, if you put that next to Millicent Rogers or to D yeah. Daisy Fellows and, and, and even Aston Amateur, which would look better, I think you know the answer. Uh, mm. It's funny, isn't it? It's, she's not the right girl to wear that. She's too young. I mean, this should, they should all be women with attitude. Well, wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't that be a, a, a first to have... I mean, I know they had Stella last, last mm. season, but if you got Linda and all of those yeah, girls exactly. out, mm. you know, and the yeah. whole collection was shown on yeah. women of a, of a certain age. Yes. Mm. What do we think about about Seventeen, about that kind of tuxedo suit? Because that was a look that was quite popular in the debut. I just thought it looked like Comme des Garçons or, or, or mm. a sort of Japanese 80s. Mm. Um, don't, don't, don't know what else to say about well, that. The suit, sorry. It looks like a zoot suit. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm not quite sure. Quite right. Mm. Really Which doesn't do an awful lot for a female. Well, it doesn't do a lot for a man's body either, but for a, a woman. But you think, would you want to couture zoot suit? Zoot suit? No, exactly. I, 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 I don't think so. But mm. I'd love to know about the little ribbons at the neck, you see. So you've got them 18 and 17. That's very Le Croix to me. It yeah. makes me happy. Yeah. And it's, yeah. And you're thinking about, you know, it's all about the couture shoulder, isn't it? And actually showing shoulder and covering arms and all of those things that you have to do if, you, if you're designing for women who aren't um, teenagers. And this all looks well there's nothing sexy about that mm. there's nothing sexy about that 
I think the fit is just always a bit odd. Like number nineteen, yeah. that shows promise as being very beautiful, buyers cut lovely, but then it, there's an oddness to that fit, isn't there? Why haven't they shown the dress? I mean, that I don't know whether that's mink or sable. That shrug, mm. and it's got the fluidity of original Scaparelli. I mean, it moves beautifully. Yeah, so I think that's the most aside, successful. Let's put that aside. Now, I would like to see that dress because it looks like two bits of Italian ice cream. <laughs> it's just gorgeous. Thinking, yeah. Yeah. Do you know what? And that's it's the one. It's cheerful, isn't it? It is. It's fun. And the hat, is it feather or we can't see? But I think it's, it's feathers. It's a good old shape. Um, but I like the look of that dress and I'd like to see that dress. Mm. Everything um, is too, it, everything feels concealed. Yeah. You know, we were talking about Schiaparelli with the confidence, you know, mm. when she did a collection or when she dressed someone, there was an immediacy to it because mm. it was very confident and there was a freedom to, there was a kind of direction to that, to mean, that vision. But this is all feels like everything's trying to be covered up a little bit. If you look at the, 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 the 20, this sort mm. of wasp, mm. um, yellow and black, the arms. I mean, I'm sorry, yeah. but it, even if I was just standing there before that girl went on, there's no way on earth I would let her walk out. It's with like those arms, you and know. that totally mm. filters through oh. to the fit looking bad. Yes. What I want to see is these outfits on May West. They yeah, need yeah, to be on yeah. someone like May West. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <coughs> yeah. Especially number 21, yeah. 22. You know, I was looking at those yeah. film stills last night of Every Day's a Holiday, and ah, oh, totally how voluptuous. Fantastic. Yeah, mm. sex on legs. Fantastic. Mm. This is, um, it's just the, the, like the contemporary fashion system mm. is, is basically failing Spot on. this collection entirely because these models are, are not. Because if you've got Nadia Alman or somebody like that, you yeah. know, doing mm. a May West, or even, I mean, Sharon Stone last year at, at, at Cannes. Wow. Can we yeah. go back to number you know? 20. But the problem is, you couldn't show these on, a, on someone that isn't that body shape because if they want to be shot, they have to be made it to but, suit that body shape is yeah. such a kind of awful but these don't even look like they've been made to fit these body no. shapes well, they, they don't look like yeah. they yeah. fit but, can i just say that i think 20 we would need to see 20 from the side because mm. i'm pretty certain and they'll, they'll say oh, she's talking shit <laughs> she's sorry swearing uh but that that is that vertes um car cartoon of the woman in the green dress and she's walking with a man and some and I, I don't know what the caption is, but it's a mm. caricature mm. of a woman who's just gone a step too far, mm. and it's fantastic. The stra now that the sleeves and everything are very like that, and I bet mm. it's got the back. So they, I, th I, I mean, he's trying. Yeah, he he is trying, but they, so I can see that the the, the skinniness is is it's disturbing. It's, a, it's appalling. It's disturbing. It is appalling. Really, mm. what kind of model is is, is that for? And there's a, I mean, they're for, presuming for their wigs, women. aren't they, as well? These sort of waspy, wafy things that mm. um, I, 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 it's just sad, really. Yeah. I don't mm. like to see um, poor little girls. I'm sure girl. they're very pretty girls, but they don't yeah. look it. No, mm. well, can't smile, you see. It's yes, you're right. It is the system at the moment that's mm. failing. It. You're don't, absolutely uh, right. Is this, is this padded on the mm. num number twenty one? Is there some kind of padding on the like a bustle back? Or it something looks like, like that? it's padded around the the hips and the mm. back, doesn't it? Because that that's verging on matrix. Looking at the gloves when they're going mm. bulbous to the to the elbow, I don't know why you why you would do that. Mm. And number twenty three is the bridal look. I believe that's the last look. Good isn't it? lord. Yeah. What, white, white boots? How is that birds? Yeah, it's bir is it birds? Bird. Is, birds. It, I can't, is it birds? Yeah, it's birds in flight. Black yeah, birds. I mean, can I just uh, be appalling, mm. just raise the spectre of Lee McQueen here? Mm. Birds, there are numerous references here, mm. Mm. actually, I think, to, to McQueen. The butterflies. Fabulous, yeah. yeah the well, no, he took the butterflies in scat, all fairness. Yeah. Well, and she took them from Worth. <laughs> she took, do you know what I mean? That they've they've travelled forever. The butterflies. It's, you know, they travel, but there are certain, and if he's yeah. padding the hits, which is one of the most interesting things that Lee McQueen yeah. did, was to change the silhouette. I mean, anyway, that that's somebody mm. who's extraordinary and brave and mm. somebody who I feel is under the corporate cosh. Mm. Mm. That's what mm. I think. Mm. Should we go through these? Yeah, the shoes are interesting. Well, we did, the, not that we saw yeah. any, apart from those white trotters at the end yeah. with the, with the, with the, um, the wedding dress. I mean, it's quite bizarre to see so much floor length, and then when it gets to the wedding dress, it's up to her knees, mm. which would cancel out 90% of clients, I'm sure. Mm. Um, it is interesting what you say because I think people love to fetishize this idea of you know like oh the modern bride wears anything. You see so many articles about that, but they don't really actually. What's it like Grace Kelly? I mean that's basically or yeah. you know or a sort of you know bias cut gorgeous thirties thing. But, mm. Uh, mm. 
So what do we think the answer is? Would we like to see him have more freedom? Because you think it's only this confusion is only it seems that this is Hang on, what's number the strategy five here? Belted. That was the thing that with, was the, the with, the, with the blue oh, so and silk. Oh, so she'd obviously, that was what was in her hand. She must have yeah, revealed okay. the dress as she was walking out. I mean, that, that did, oh, I, I can't, can't even begin. It is a terrible look, I number can't seven. even begin. It really is a disgrace. Yeah. Mm. About, about that. What are they doing with that bit of mink there but I think they're well. trying to do humour, but yourself. the thing is that you can't really bottle whimsy. And, and could you, could you, well, you can't br Brilliant comment. Yeah. Brilliant comment. Yeah. Brilliant. Uh, oh, my look. God, Lou. <laughs> <laughs> You're a genius. It's a lovely thing to say. You're absolutely right. You can't bottle no, it. No, you can't. You can't. Can you? And I feel like with the lack of like makeup and the lack mm. of hairstyling, it's kind of, it's again, it's that tension between the heritage and the contemporary. Mm. I feel like they're doing that because they want a contemporary edge yeah. and they think that will give it a contemporary edge, whereas it just does not work. Mm. It's anemic, it's washed out. Mm. Well, I mean, uh, Stephen Jones said to me once, he said the thing that when he was at St Martin's, everybody prepared, preferred Scaparelli to Chanel because Scaparelli was punk. And it's mm -hmm. true, mm -hmm. he's mm -hmm. punk. There's no punk going on here no. at all. It feels cautious, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yes. And because it's actually, ironically, given all oh, that cartoon, and, and you could say it's brave how much is on those girls, but that smacks of caution because it's, yes. it's fear to make a statement with one thing. It's mm. just too much stuff. Which is the thing because I have such faith in Marco Zanini. I think he's a brilliant, brilliant designer. Who is? Marco Zanini. I think he's amazing. Mm. That, yes. That's the thing is it's such a... But maybe some houses it's just, there's too much, isn't there? And I think this is one of those where it's, there's too much. I think there, it though. must be absolutely horrific yeah. to take on this house. Mm. Horrific. And frightening and he should just be allowed to, I think that he's being controlled and I think he should be given a fair crack of the whip. In all honesty, mm. I don't think it means that he's not a good designer. I no. think it's a lot of things, that, you know, having to be on different messages, mm. and it's a real shame. And I think the idea that, oh, we'll do different looks is idiotic. It's not, it's not, it's not no a sig sig There is no signature. Mm. It isn't a there is no signature here mm. at all. And it's not presenting viable options for a woman's wardrobe either, which is what you do no. want to see from couture. And also, how is this going to filter down? You'll just see lots of hearts, bleeding hearts. Yeah, but we see it's yeah we see, but you know that's a tattoo anyway, isn't yeah. it? It's like it's not. And you go buy Comme de Gars on play if you want to. Yeah, anyway. exactly. So I, is this going to filter down? What is this what relevant? What is the to filter down? I mean, that's the mm. that's the point. What is the to filter down? But it should be. It but should be extraordinary. Of, do you think yeah. does you know when things filter down? It's because the girl on the street gets it and she wants to aspire to that look in a way, but. I wondered, does your average girl know Scaparelli? Yeah, but does I'm talking top shop. Will it filter to, down? Does a top shop shopper know about Scaparelli? Does she even want to emulate that look? I think that's what's mm. it. You know that that whimsy that we talked about. She want that to look like that. No, to be honest, I don't. And I do feel like this idea of, you know, we talked about Scaparelli with the tackiness. Yeah. But we've got new arbiters of bad taste now. Mm. You know, Mitchell yes. Prada does that True. very well. Medium Kirchhoff do that very <coughs> well. Yes. Even Christopher Kane, yes. you know, bad, and making yeah. things that look like bin bags. And I think, for me, what to make Scaparelli relevant is it's she needs, there needs to be a sense of what Scaparelli bad taste means because there's already a lot of people doing yes. bad taste so. very well, and it's hard. To, this feels like it's just kind of trying to go along that route rather than have a unique point of view. I think again, it goes back to that problem that we were talking about earlier about looking at the flat images and it all having mm. to make sense like that because a lot of the wittiness mm. in Scaparelli's designs was details like the buttons mm. you know being sort of acrobats or having the sort of insects around the neck that you we wouldn't be able to see mm. in a picture like this mm. so I guess that is a kind of a downfall of the way that we consume fashion. I think, I think you're right, but at the same token, if you looked at a scaparelli from a distance, you know, a long shot of one of the great dresses, or, or even looked across a gallery like the V&A and saw that fantastic thing that the Dow Duchess of Devonshire um, donated all those years ago to Beaton, great. it looks amazing from there. The silhouette's mm. incredible. Oh, yeah. You can tell that's a mm. wonderful yeah, yeah. creature. Yeah, yeah, I'm not doubting that, but I'm talking about And then about you get close up and then it really is amazing. Mm. Like, yeah, mm. those kind of... But do you know, sorry, do you, do you, if we're talking about what the top shop customer, for example, mm. would want, Trompe where is it? Mm. Mm -hmm. Where is it? 
mm. x-ray things where is yeah. the, where are they because all they had that to do would, is that yeah. and that would filter down and yeah. it, you know it's influencing enough people why isn't that here because it's so basic and it was such a winner it's such that fantastic yeah. look and I've seen Stephen Jones selling little hats at a, the, the, the Trompe jumper mm. hat size hello mm -hmm. Mm. winners mm. winners here so we want something more confident but also I guess in a way I know it sounds simplistic but something more obvious something that celebrates yeah. what we love Scaparelli for it goes back to what you said right at the start. And commercial for a couture client Mm. You know, I think that's what, what once you're pleasing those yes. gals, that's um, something that will filter down, mm. actually. Mm. Mm. And let's not forget that two weeks ago, a Schiaparelli Pagan Collection jacket was sold for something like £32,000 mm. at Kerry Taylor's. Mm. You know, and the scroll, the Rococo scroll, copy, you know, mm. wonderful. Wait, fantastic. for the first time I realised they'd actually painted on the leather. Mm. Oh, this white paint know. on the leather to highlight, it's Didn't extraordinary. Know. It's just to mm. see that close up, I don't know how much that went for, but, uh, you know, a lot of money to a collector mm. or to a museum. Do some of that, please. Mm. Just, I mean, the and so simple. Just yeah. the op art, you mm. know, that sort of op art, mm. black, white, great. But, but also, here we are sitting. Oh God, heritage, heritage. How irritating it must be to be a designer. Yeah. To be told that you have to kind of look back all but the time. But that's the problem with these revivals of the houses. Yes. That's it exactly is. It's Caprelli. It's not Zanini. You know, yeah. that's, the, that's the name above the door, and that's what people are more familiar with. I would have mm. thought. Well, let's try and have some optimism. What else are we looking forward to for Couture? What would we like to see? What should Couture mean now, if we had to sum up? Oh. I'd, I'd say it's for shop for, for a certain woman. It is shopping for Couture. You know, it's not shows. It's not, you know, for pictures on the internet. They're shopping. These mm. are serious propositions for a, a very wealthy woman's wardrobe. And um, I'd, I mean, I'd, I'd love to see a dress that can take you to a cocktail party, to a ball, something that's very obvious. It's the, that's what it's for. Mm. You know, I mean, the Chanel day suit is, you know, that's probably the classic mm. rich woman's costume, you know, and mm. it has been for donkey's years. Mm. And ag again, thinking, go going back to, to Scaparelli, that, um, you know, we've got Lagerfeld doing all these, I mean, has really taken um, Chanel's entire language, the lexicon of mm -hmm. Chanel, uh, is disrespectful sometimes, which mm. you quite like, mm. you know, is sometimes right, a complete carbon copy, but it's Chanel, Lagerfeld. it's not Lagerfeld for mm. Chanel. It's Chanel, it's Coco Chanel we're still looking at and should be thanking mm. for all of the, you know, the, the, that she gave him those tools to work with, mm. and Scaparelli, it's all there if you want it. <laughs> Mm. Do you, do, sorry, the, the the thing about the filtering up and down, mm. um, which of course changed in the after the war, and mm. it was fashion filtering up from the street, as we know, was became very dominant. I think that's that can be true today, but a lot of my students will go straight out and buy designer clothes. I mean, mm. the idea that they could make their own clothes. God, I wish they would. It'd be so fantastic. Or make. Scaparelli biscuits. Do you mm. know what? Do, yeah, that would be really wonderful. Mm. But a lot of them, the fashion communication will buy, um, buy designer labels and, and, and stuff, and they're very unadventurous, I think, and it, for me, very disappointing. Mm. But I would like to see, because I think fashion filtering up from the street in lots of ways it should be, but it gets very little coverage, mm. um, apart from people like the New British, for example, which is brilliant. But what I do think is that it would be great to see some really good designs filtering down. If mm. something like Schiaparelli or re the mm. design really worth their salt was filtering down to top shop. Well, it was Whether it might be, you know, Trump yeah. or your, your wonderful, <laughs> you know, lobsters. What's wrong with that? That yeah. would be great. Mm. You it know. didn't take much for the 80s neons, did it? You know, that's been going mm. on for goodness knows how yeah. long the top shop. You mm. know, I mean, Schiaparelli, that's so much more intelligent mm. and interesting if you care We to just all want more Schiaparelli in our lives. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah. so. It should be on one of those uh, May West I lip sofas, so. shouldn't yeah. it? And, yeah, and yeah, May West, exactly. And you know, sex on legs, what's wrong with that? Yes. What a good night. God, I can't believe it. Thank you so much, Fred. That was so fascinating. Good. I learned so much. It was great to chat to you all. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks very much, Lee. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>